Alternative für Deutschland in Germany, National Front, you know, in France, you keep in the UK, Brexit, right? Brexit is a reaction to that, you name it. We are going to get rid of the bad ones because we have some really bad ones in here right now. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be a real wall. And we're going to have a door in the wall. It's going to be a wall that's powerful. It's going to be a real wall. They're coming here because they have free health care, free food, free housing. Our values, our identity, we will cease to exist. <laughs> We must be mad to take this risk. If we want to help genuine refugees, if we want to protect our societies, we must stop the boats coming. No way, no way you will not make the Netherlands home. The rapid movement of people, especially in the European case, that created this panic that all of a sudden that the people with different backgrounds are coming and how are we actually going to live? <laughs> We want a Europe free from fear, free from terrorists who shall Allah Akbar. And the right wing parties that they successfully exploit that situation because sometimes actually there may or may not exist that kind of feeling, but the right wing parties actually they very successfully exploit that feeling. <laughs> Másföld részről érkező idegeneknek, akik nem beszélik a nyelvünket, nem tisztelik a kultúránkat, törvényeinket és életformánkat, akik le akarják cserélni a miénket a sajátjukkal. There is a certain xenophobic groundswell, but right-wing parties actually they take that and then they amplify it. So they, they make it sometimes actually they create something they may not be there or they give a voice that may be marginal or may not come into the mainstream. I would build a great wall and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensive. Especially in this past election when Trump wanted to enact a Muslim ban and then build a wall, he got people scared about limited circumstances of a crime occurring and he focused on those and he let people know that there was this kind of threat coming into our country that was going to harm you. We will begin removing the more than two million criminal illegal immigrants from the country. Drug dealers, gang heads, gang members, killers. And it got him motivated in a sense that it's benefited him and his party. At the White House Thursday, the president unveiled a plan to deny asylum seekers, saying anyone who tries to enter the United States between ports of entry will be automatically sent back, and calling asylum seekers the, quote, biggest loophole in the U.S. immigration system. It takes these isolated, marginal, kind of, you know, here and there voices and consolidates them and turns them into a massive anti-migrant, anti-Muslim sentiment. Deutschland and Europa sind in den vergangenen 50 Jahren islamischer, ja auch afrikanischer geworden. 200 Millionen Afrikaner bei allem Respekt, aber mehr auch Europa, dann noch Europa. Four years ago, they founded this new party that is calling itself the alternative for Germany. Unfortunately, they got like 12% in the last election. Political landscape, all of it is really a little bit shifting to the right, and at the same time, the other half is shifting to the left. So the centered parties are losing votes to this really right-wing party, so they try to change their political attitude to a little bit more to the right to kind of re-catch their voters. People are looking for that difficult combination of a greater sense of economic security, greater rights for workers, not just reducing uh, ever more uh, you know, the rights and, and, and protections for, for ordinary people, but at the same time they're looking for that sense of cultural security too around migration and globalization. There are a lot of reasons why the anti-immigrant sentiment is increasing. It's not only the problem in Turkey, it is a worldwide problem. There are economic, you know, political and cultural reasons, so we couldn't generalize it only to one reason. There, there are different dynamics and it changes from country to country as well. It has some foundations. When you look at the statistical data, the evaporation of job securities, you clearly see that people in Europe are scared that, you know, their wealth is going to be shared with the newcomers. The rates of inequality among the highest in Europe 
Many people feel left behind by globalization and let down by political leaders. The populists sense there may be an opportunity to bring those leaders down. Wealth is getting scarcer, people are more scared, and that's why they are voting for anti-immigrant populist parties, which we could clearly see almost everywhere in, in Europe. Uh, the one is the economic crisis, of course, especially after the 2008 economic crisis, that mostly the working class and the middle class uh, voters, they bear the brunt of that economic crisis in European countries, in the United States, so they lost financial ground and they usually look for some scapegoats. 50 years, America has been taking the poorest of the poor, the most backward, dysfunctional cultures, and a lot of what got Trump elected was people saying, OK, that's enough. America needs a little me time now. The fear is intended to sort of disconnect people from their own logic, right? Their ability to sort of process something logically. We're two weeks out from a very important election. He's really, I think, playing politics rather than actually trying to solve it. As of 1980s, actually, job opportunities started to be scarcer. So evaporation of job security and so on. So I strongly believe that the migration was not perceived as a problem back then because there used to be integrative economy. But now, as we entered into the neoliberal era and neoliberal political economy, this sort of triggers uh, anti-immigrant attitudes, for example, in the majority societies in, in many European countries. And of course, there are lots of misperceptions about Syrians. The one is that they take away our resources, our jobs, the job situation. These um, quote, refugees, i.e. people who want to come to a first world country and live off its taxpayers, they're not fleeing something, they're coming here because they get free health care, free food, free housing. Should America's immigration policy be used to benefit the people already here, or should it be benefiting Pakistani pushcart operators, illiterate in their own language, never mind ours, who come here, go on welfare, commit terrorism, engage in crimes. I would like to give you an example. This Pegida movement, you know, anti-immigrant movement, actually that started in Dresden. We clearly see that there are not many immigrants. So who are the people who are joining, you know, this anti-immigrant sort of protest? We clearly see that, you know, there are retired people, unemployed youth, and so on. It is not legitimate, but it is understandable. So people think that with the newcomers, their share in the welfare is going to be shrinked. I think part of that, the election was saying, no, we want to take care of our own. No, how about raise American benefits and let us retire earlier and stop taking in the poor of the world? We have an illegal immigration issue. And by providing more perks and benefits subsidized by California taxpayers, you're issuing a cattle call for thousands more to come into this country. Migration is not perceived as a threat if there is integrative economy. When integrative economy is undermined or weakening, then of course refugees and immigrants are framed as problems. You know, it was very easy for even for Brazilians to just move to the UK. For the past nine, ten years, it's become harder and harder and harder. And then all the bad misconceptions that there are about Latinos, like Latino women, for example, they come into the picture to kind of stop, to create a border, you know, to create a wall between us and wherever it is that we want to go. People are equal. Ideologies, values are not equal. Religions are not equal. Cultural relativists to say um, Islamic culture is the same as Christianity, allow them and don't demand from them to integrate and to assimilate. This is the worst thing that has happened to us. Votre quartier, votre village, l'école de vos enfants, votre vie, votre niveau de salaire seront inévitablement impactés par le choc. Moi, présidente, le rétablissement des frontières sera mis en place dès le lendemain de ma prise de fonction. Each country has ethno-racial, ethno-religious hierarchies that is indeed stemming from its history. So once immigrants enter into a country, actually they are not only entering into a geographical space, but they are also entering into the symbolic space of a country, right, with their ethnicities and so on. Entering into this new space, they are welcomed or seen with certain images, you know, on the basis of their social class, ethnicity, religion, and so on. So ethnic boundaries are actually referred to the borders or the boundaries among the groups. Thousands 
coming over a day, it's a problem. Cities are being overwhelmed with the immigration issue. Because in some parts of the country, it does seem like the America that we know and love doesn't exist anymore. Massive demographic changes have been foisted upon the American people. And they're changes that none of us ever voted for and most of us don't like. Especially for America, it's a, it's a very strange assertion to make is that they are drastically changing the cultural fabric of our country. Whereas we actually are fully constituted of people from all over the world. There's been refugees coming to America for something like six decades. Those people make up every asset in our society. I mean, it's just not a very logical assumption to make that people coming to our country are going to change how it already is. People are hearing um, these changes as somehow a fundamental remaking of what America is. So when we look at this massive entrance, you know, we clearly see that there is a demographic shift in many countries. Let me give you an example. Today, 53, 54% of the Rotterdam city's population is coming from migration background. In New York, this is the case. In Berlin, this is the case. There is a demographic shift towards the minorities. In 30 years time, 40 years time, majority will be one of the minority groups in these big cities. Of course, this scares people. Uh, we are saying uh, Islam does not belong to Germany, which is a historical fact and we're making it very clear we don't want to move towards a society which is more and more influenced by Islam. We don't want that. If we allow to ignore the problems uh, that we are facing today, let alone later in the century with the demographic situation in Africa, we will cease to exist. Our values, our identity, will not be taken away by the European Union only, but by um, the Islamization of our society. In Europe, the problem, of course, is that the most of the refugees tend to be Muslim. So in Europe, there is a widespread Islamophobia and the prejudice against the cultural difference. So that's what we see when we look at is, especially among the populist parties, that they exploit it quite well. And the emphasis is, well, you know, they come from different backgrounds. They're Muslims. They cannot integrate to European cultures. And their numbers are huge. And the European culture is going to transform if we accept these Muslim refugees because people don't know the other. They talk about refugees, but when they talk about refugees, they talk about this big, massive group of people. But they don't know who these people are, what their stories are, what their lives, what they you know, bring, and you know, what kind of pain that they have. Um, so when you actually reduce people into this large, massive group of people, it becomes very easy to talk about them. You know, like we don't want refugees because you have no relationship. But once the relationship is established, actually people's attitude change quite a bit. Yes, I'm an immigrant and you are local. We can trust each other if we can just hire these receptions. So governments also can play a role to tell the people that you are in the end, you are a human. All of us are living here in the earth. Maybe this time, it's for the immigrants will be us, and next time, we don't know.